This is not a happy story. It's a story of a moral corruption that exists in our province and the impact it has on a few people living off of the Royal Road, 30 to 40 families and homes, and the relationship they have with their provincial government, political leadership, and the Myra Quarry. But it's not just about them. It's about a process that needs to improve, improve a lot. Because in our near future, we have to have conversations about the Sisson mine, about fracking down in Sussex, and how we use our natural resources. It's also about water. And it's also about how everything's connected. So as we wander into the specifics about the Myra Quarry and the impact it's had on the people who live in the area, we will also pay attention to so much more than that, to how decisions are made in this province, who benefits, and how to improve the system. But we begin with Myra Quarry and the Royal Mess on the Royal Road. Like the economy of, of jobs in our area. Mm. <clears throat> and I know we have, I know Jerry has letters from the city about how appreciative they are of all this cheap rock they now have and the transportation is so much cheaper so it's so close and it's all good. But what I don't think that people realize and what's spread out in front of me is the impact statements from the people who live in our area mm. and, and, and they're the people who are paying for the cheap rock that everybody else is enjoying. And these letters are full of comments about damage to their homes from blasting and, and they're full of loss of an enjoyment of their property because for 12 to 13 hours a day they can't be outdoors because of the dust and then a few more hours because they have to go out and clean up everything every day so that they can sit on their patio. And then there's the loss of, of the value of their property as people are probably who live in the immediate area, the 30 or 40 families in the valley, would probably be fortunate if they could get 50 cents on the dollar for the, for the value of their homes. So many of these people here talk to me about feeling trapped. They're older people. Their house was part of their retirement package, and now it's worth, worth much less, mm. even if anyone wanted to buy it. Um, so there's a lot of desperation going on in here. So And there's all that stress that Jerry, that Jerry talked about earlier. So their house is, is deteriorating, and they're paying a huge price for this cheap rock that the city of Fredericton celebrates every single day. It's basically, let's not engage with these people. Or if we have a meeting with them, we'll only invite one person. So it becomes the classic he said, she said. Many times Jerry and I wanted to go to one of these meetings with somebody from the Regional Service Commission, but they would only allow one of us to go. And sometimes they would blurt out shameful things about this quarry. It was a done deal before our public hearing. Mm -hmm. But if it's only one person witnessing all of this, it's very difficult for that one person to go out and say, my goodness, they confessed that they didn't do due diligence on this, that they actually didn't care that they didn't do due, due diligence on this Myra quarry. So on the one hand, we have this guy who wants to put his quarry there. He's had trouble in Burt's Corner. He was shut down there. He misrepresents what he wants to do in Douglas and Estes Bridge. On the other hand, we have rules and regulations in our local service districts. And, and apparently they aren't worth the paper that they're written on because if you read them, they are very strong with respect to what they're going to what they're going to protect and how they're going to protect the people who move to them. And then one day you wake up and you realize you have no protections in the local service district whatsoever. If it says that you can only have things happen in your residential community that are compatible with your residential community, you find out thanks to what happened to us. No, anything goes here. That's the way it is in New Brunswick. That's how we build better economies. We completely ignore the voice of the people. We completely ignore the health impacts of what we're doing. We completely ignore the environmental impacts of what we're doing. Way to go. Is that, uh, is that how you out there want to build your economy? I mean, have things like this happened to you? I think that's a relevant question here. I think we have significant concerns about health issues, both in relation to the people who live there in, in relation to the at-risk species that also live there. Uh, and 
we started the process very early this spring with some meetings with ministers and, and eventually the premier, which we were unable to achieve in the previous government in the previous five years. And we, we kind of tried to get them to understand that we needed to know how, much, how toxic this dust is. Mm. So uh, they managed to delay putting out any testing material until the middle of September. And so we're not in the busy, dusty, hot, dry part of summer. So, and some of that is still not functioning. Mm. So my guess is they don't want to know because if they really did know, they might have to address it. Mm. In that international agreement that Canada and New Brunswick and the state of Maine and possibly the province of Quebec signed on to, the only one who's really done anything to protect the river is the state of Maine. Mm. I'd like to read a paragraph uh, pertaining to all this here. It's, uh, it's from uh, the Honorable Serge Roussel, who was Environment Minister for the Liberal government, uh, which would not speak to us at all for the four years they were in power. Um, taking uh, that into consideration after review by department staff and myself, a number of concerns and uncertainties have arisen concerning cumulative effects on both the physical and social environment in, in the area proposed for quarry operation. These includes, but are not limited to, the cumulative effects of increased dust, noise, and traffic in an area already subject to these effects, potential impacts on well water, groundwater, and water runoff, potential structural impacts to properties in the area, potential environmental impacts including loss of forests, wetlands, and impacts to water courses, impacts on wood turtle habitat, a threatened species on both the New Brunswick and Government of Canada species at risk, undetermined impacts to several species at risk, birds in the area including the common nighthawk and bank swallow. And that's from Serge Roussel. I think the decision yeah. on the Myra Quarry was made before the first public meeting, mm -hmm. period. It was. Yes. And I think we know that from some of the documentation. Mm -hmm. And so it wouldn't have mattered how many people went to the meeting and how many people said no. The decision was already made, in, and I think that the, they kind of took a look at Royal Road and said, country, country bumpkins, they're not going to say anything, and so we're just going to ride it right out through there. And that was pretty much it. And that was actually said by the director, the Regional Service Commission. Mm -hmm. People on the rural road won't matter to them. Well, mm -hmm. I, I'll let you know how it matters to this little lady. She says, there was a time I loved living here. This is my home. Now I think about moving every day. However, I feel very trapped because who in their right mind would buy a house with a quarry in the backyard? It's such a depressing situation how this started and it, it was either favoritism or uh, a donation and um, and therefore um, it's done the people don't have a say in it it goes right through and we've showed you many many things that have been eased through I've talked to public uh, employees that have retired uh, on this here and they said it was eased through they cut corners for it so h how would you think otherwise and, and which then begs, unless you guys want to speak to that too, because it begs how do we fix it or how do we address it because you've got that important renewal window coming up. I personally have no proof that they did anything wrong, but I find it odd that they never want to talk to me. Hmm. I don't want to talk about the process. They don't want to talk about the way things are now. They don't want to talk about a solution. They don't want to talk about the health issues because they don't know about them because they don't want to. Yeah. Um, they're just hoping we all go away or die or something. And some of these people will die soon yeah. because people, they're old. Yeah. Some people had to move away because of their health issues. Yeah. Okay. One poor fellow had to sell his house in 2015 because his wife was so on. This is his letter right here. here. Yeah. yeah. She had breathing problems. They had to clean her breathing machine on a daily basis. They had to sell their house for 50000 less than it was assessed for, or something like that, in 2015. Mm. 
I mean, do, you, do you want to read that letter? It's, it was quite brief, so yeah. <clears throat> if you think it's appropriate. you know. I was asked why I was selling out on the Royal Road. I work nights, and the increase in truck traffic doesn't allow me much rest. Can't enjoy outside my deck because of dust from the quarry, which I am told is toxic. My wife has medical problems, and the dust doesn't help. With the increase in truck traffic, it's just a matter of time before someone gets hit going out their driveway. And that was 2015. Yeah. And only a, less than a year in operation. You know, there's another letter from a, a gentleman who lives on the Kingsley Road. And then they never drive on the Royal Road because his wife can't tolerate the dust. So they do the McLeod Hill detour every single time they go to the city. Because if she enters the area where the quarry is, she coughs uncontrollably. Not much peace, but if I was uh, in another area, I, I will not get any peace living there. I enjoy my property. It's beautiful property along the stream. I've been there for 30 years, and I would I said I would never sell it, but you can't. I now. would be out in a minute if I could. And that that's what we live through every day, every single day except the weekend. The noisy trucks with rocks and dust. I I cannot put up with it anymore. I heard um, Minister Carr upbraiding David Kuhn one day. He said that David Kuhn sucked and blowed, and I have that footage, which I could use, I guess. But I would say to Jeff Carr, you're sucking and blowing when it comes to everything to do with the Myra Quarry. You are the sucker and the blower. You have received a lot of hard questions, and you are ducking for cover. We'd like to see a little bit more leadership from you with respect to the quarry. And I think that the only reasonable thing to do with that quarry is to shut it down. It started with a misrepresentation. People are being severely hurt by it and victimized by it. You cannot continue this. The questions are only going to get tougher. I, I think, as I said previously, the only way to solve all of the issues that we're concerned about is to close the quarry. And I don't suggest that he should suffer economically from that, um, but it's what needs to be done. That quarry, we're not only concerned about Nashwaxa Stream, that quarry sits on top of the third largest aquifer in Canada, I believe. Yes. And if they puncture that, we can't clean it. And there was a quarry on the Carlisle Road, right? Yeah. And they went through. And they closed it. And they closed it. Closed so it. I guess we have to wait for that. Yeah. But I, I, it's, it's the people, it's the environment, it's the traffic, it's the danger. There's, they, there's no matter what they do, they can't ameliorate all of those concerns. So they need to find another place for him to mine his rock. So a question emerges right away. Is it possible to actually shut down the quarry? Are there examples of it happening anywhere else? In my research, I found at least one example. I suspect there are more. And it's the Doe Lime Quarry in Guelph, Ontario. The residents there had had enough. They were also very, very worried about their water supply. And so they protested, lobbied their municipal government, and had it changed. The Doe Lime Quarry diverts about 11 million liters of water a day, some of which the city could use for its drinking water supply when it assumes control of the water. The city would also build a system to protect the groundwater supply for any exposure to surface water contamination that could result from damage to the aquitard a layer of dense rock that acts like a barrier to protect groundwater. Now you might remember Judith Seymour talked about what happens when a quarry breaks through and gets into the aquifer. It ruins everything. Of course, the real question is, how come our provincial government, civil servants, and the Department of Environment, and Minister Jeff Carr, continued to do nothing about this? Which gets to the end of the show, and an action that you can take to help out 
not only the people in that area, but also the province as a whole. Now, another theme running through this story that connects all of them is the fact that there's no response, no communication with the provincial government, civil servants or politicians. How can it be that the chair of the local service district in that area, the Myra Quarry, has received no communication whatsoever about the quarry going in or about the follow-up to how to get the quarry closed? And then there's the story out of Sussex, where the chair of the local service district there, a couple of years ago, was never communicated with, never connected with, about the continuation of doing fracking in their area. And recently there was a story in the media about the breakwater that was built down in Alma. And here's a quote from that story. Consultations, I would say, were very limited and very unclear. Casey and Christos Stone both said they are not happy with the lack of government consultation on the project. Casey said he's had a hard time getting in touch with anyone from DFO about his concerns. This is the culture of how we communicate, or not communicate, with major projects in this province. They just suddenly appear, just like our three people from Royal Road spoke to. Looming on the horizon are conversations and decisions about the Sisson Mine. Check out this image about the scale of the Sisson Mine. It's pulled from a Facebook post. In the string of comments that came underneath the Facebook post was some, one person saying that they were worried about the threat to the water system. To which someone else replied, it's not even near the St. John River, so what are you worried about? Here's an image of the water systems in New Brunswick as a whole. And you point out to me where it's not connected. So what are we supposed to do? There's silence when it comes to five years worth of questions for the Myra Quarry and the people who live in that area. There's the deadline for the renewal of the quarry's permit of November 19th. And the people who live in that area would like for you to understand that what impacts them one day could impact you. And they need your help and they need your action in order to have that quarry closed. They would like you to get a hold of Jeff Carr, the Environment Minister, or you can get hold of the Health Minister, and you can also get hold of Premier Blaine Higgs. Email them directly. Let them know that what happens in Royal Road outside of Fredericton could also happen in the Sisson Brook area, could also happen down in the Sussex area, or anywhere else in the province that continues not to have a water management strategy and a land use policy that includes voices from the local service districts. If you see this province as a place you love to live in, and if you see this province as something that's worth your energy, then please get a hold of your local MLA or the relevant cabinet ministers and take back your province. Thank you for watching. Be good, have fun, love each other.